What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show recap with Mo. Well, we're getting ready to get into another episode, break down the Tyler Perry sisters. But before we get into this thing, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shit Smith that's going down, all right? So the episode we're getting ready to get into is for season seven, episode number eight, titled Pins and Needles. Now the synopsis states that Karen and Zach's DNA test reveals more than they expected. Andy is surprised by a new big client and learns shocking information about a man in her life. Danny and Sabrina try to turn back the hands of time. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this thing. All right, so we kicked this episode off with Andy and an old friend from law school. So obviously Andy has reached out to an old friend to do a little bit of research on Mr. H.A.G. himself, AKA Gary, to find out what has he been up to, right? So uh, we find out very quickly that this guy is well connected in the industry, obviously, because he was able to reach out to a lot of people, the DOJ and all of these people, whoop, whoop, whoop. So, quick thing here, he's like, look, before I give you this, I need you to understand that this dude right here is not a good dude. And look, you can go ahead and kill it real quick because we've been telling Miss Andrea Barnes for years that this guy just wasn't it. But obviously she had to see it for herself, right? So he gets up, he gives her the manila file folder and whatnot, and he's getting ready to leave the room. And he was like, oh, I almost forgot, you know, the whole situation about Jordan Williams. I looked into that as well. And all of that right there was fake as well. So, of course, obviously, Andy is relieved by the information that she's receiving right here. And my only thing with Andy is this. You're so relieved now and so ready to go to see Jordan when Jordan was trying to reach out to you in the previous daggone episode and you didn't have time to talk to him. When he was trying to see you face to face, you didn't have time to talk to him. But now you got time to talk to him all of a sudden due to the information that you received that he's in the clear that it was a lie about the white girl and all of this stuff. And all of a sudden, let me go see my man. No. Leave your man where he at. You see what I'm saying? Where he is, let him be. You see what I'm saying? Don't rush over there because you want... Let, let me get off of this because I, I was... <laughs> I was about to go in on Andy. But we're going to hold off on that real quick. So, anyhow, getting back on track, right? Thank y'all for pulling me back in. Because uh, we see Fatima coming into our office. As I stated... Andy ain't got no time. She got to go see her man. Fatima's like, uh-uh, no, you need to wait. She was like, wait on what? I ain't got time for it. She was like, somebody's waiting to see you. She was like, look, tell them they got to wait. So Miss Marie Willis comes to the door. She was like, uh-uh, I don't wait for no damn body. I was like, you better tell them. <laughs> you better tell them, Miss Marie. I don't wait for no daggone body. You gonna wait for me. So anyhow, Miss Marie comes in, sits down with her, and she pretty much conveys to her why she's there. She wants to divorce her husband, but she ain't giving her the job yet. And they're sitting there like, what? Like, I'm going through. <laughs> I'm going through this whole spiel and you ain't even giving me the job. She was like, no, I'm from the old school. Like, I need to know who you are before I get in bed with you. Essentially, that's what she's telling Andy. Andy hasn't learned that yet, Miss Willis. So that's why she's having issues with that. But of course, we're going to get into that as we continue on this journey, right? So Miss Willis is like, look, I had breakfast with Mr. Jordan Williams, and he highly recommended you. Now, let me go back in on Andy real quick, and I, and I promise y'all I'm going to get off of her, at least for right now, because you mistreated this guy. This guy told you in the previous episode or so that I love you. You couldn't utter the words back to him, right? Which I get. You're not there yet. You've gone through uh, a traumatic experience with Gary. I get it, I guess. But at the same time, that same man that you mistreated, that you could not communicate with, that man that you were avoiding was still, you know, supporting you. He was still supporting you, Andy. He was putting in good words, saying good things about your name when you could not support him the same. Dang, that was... That was good right there. Y'all see how I did that little rhyme and that rhythm right there? 
<laughs> that was fine. Um, anyhow, going on from there, we head over to the hospital where we see Sabrina is now leaving from her appointment where she was actually going through the process of getting her eggs frozen and all of that stuff, right? And while she's in the waiting room, we see Karen walking in for her consultation, right? Because today is the day that she's supposed to have the DNA test. And she's supposed to meet Zach at the hospital, of course, without Fatima. Remember what she said previously, right? So, you know, when Karen comes in, she was like, Brina? And she was like, what you doing up here? And of course, Sabrina's like, what are you doing up here? And she was like, oh, I'm just coming up here for a checkup or whatnot. Sabrina's like, hold on, wait a minute. Didn't you just have a checkup? And of course, Karen was trying to hold off without telling too much. But of course, Sabrina at this point is giving her a look like, look, I know you ain't holding out on me. Like, go ahead and tell me what it is. So, of course, Karen caves in. She tells her what she's there for. She's there to get a DNA test for, you know, Zach. Well, she feels it's for Fatima. But, you know, at the end of the day, go ahead and get it done. Right. So going on from there. We head back over to the law firm where we see Ha is now coming in. And if you don't know who Ha is, Ha is hating as Hayden, all right? So Hayden comes in. He's frustrated about something that's going down in the office. Fatima is standing beside Andy's office attempting to hear what's going on, what's been said inside of the office. So when he sees her beside Andy's room, he's like, what's going on? And she was like, hey, hey, shh. You need to be quiet. I'm trying to hear what's going on. He was like, what's going on in there? Who's in there? So Fatima's trying to hold off without telling him too much. But of course, she just cannot hold her tongue because he's talking about going in there snitching. And she was like, look, snitch is always going to be snitches. Now, you already know who he is. Snitch is going to do what snitches do, Fatima. And you should already know that. But anyhow, she was like, well, you know, the lady that's in there is Mrs. Um, Mrs. Willis, Maureen Willis. He was like, you lying? You talking about the billionaire? She was like, yeah, she's in there. He was like, what the hell is she doing in there? Well, they getting ready to come out. You can ask her for yourself. So she set him up for the kill, y'all. So when she comes out, he's trying to, you know, do his whole elevator speech or whatnot. And she was like, uh-uh. You can hold, <laughs> you can hold all of that. Um, I will be in contact with you later on, Miss Andy, and uh, we'll talk. So when Miss Marie Willis leaves, of course, Hayden has to know, how in the hell did you swindle Mrs. Willis into coming into your office instead of my office? Because you, you should not be able to pull that type of clientele. I'm the big fish. You the small fish. Essentially, that's what he's telling Andy to her face. Of course, Andy is feeling proud right now because she feels like she has the upper hand on Hayden right now. But this is the part that pissed me off as well, because she was like, well, I'm not like you. My work speaks for itself. But most importantly, I have good people to speak on my behalf. So I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. What people are we talking about, Andy? Because you don't do that much daggone work in the office. But if we want to keep it real, put a name on it. See, this is the year that we put names on ish, right? So let's put a name on it. Let's say Jordan. Jordan was the one that spoke you up to Mrs. Willis. And this was the same Jordan that you didn't have time for the other night. But now all of a sudden, you ready to go see your man. Man, get the hell up out of here. Like, this is just crazy. But since we're talking about going to see our man, Andy gives Fatima the day off so she can go ahead and head over there with Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Something that Karen told her not to do. So anyhow, moving on from there. Next, we see Gary coming to see Tamara, who's actually in a hotel room, right? And she's asking Gary, like, why are you calling me talking all this yin-yang on the telephone, right? And he's looking at her all seductively like, you know you want me. And I'm sitting here like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> how did we get here? Like, this is the same guy that told Hayden as Hayden not to marry her, not to trust her, go ahead and get your marriage annulled, all of this stuff. Like, and then he just told him in the previous episode, hey man, you need to slow down. Or maybe he was talking for himself, like, I need to see what's in her, you know, because those cheeks were cheeking, right? So he... 
<laughs> so he needed to test the waters before he allowed hating ass Hayden to continue this relationship with Miss Tamara because he's just only looking out for his boy. Like I, I see, I see his standpoint now. <laughs> I see. I see his standpoint, but anyhow, moving forward, right? We see where they've obviously finished what they were doing, the entanglement that they were involved in. And we see on the nightstand, we see a cell phone and we see uh, a, a, a pen that's lighting up, right? A bright ass red light. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, I know she's not recording. And if she is, this has to be the brightest damn recording device ever in history because I, I thought it was supposed to be, you know, not seen. So if I'm sitting here and I'm just laying in the bed, you know, I'm going to see a bright ass red light. But anyhow, I was like, I'm hoping that's not Gary's device. But obviously it's not because Hayden comes back in. He's getting dressed, talking about, well, you got what you want. And then I'm going to send you an emoji if I want to meet up with you once again. She was like, shit, boy, you know you want me. And I was like, Gary, you know you wanted her from day one. Because your whole thing is, why would a woman like that want to like you? That's what you told Hayden as Hayden a few episodes ago. So, yeah, she's pretty right up on that, man. But anyhow, going on from there, Brother Gary tells Tamara, hey, keep your mouth closed. Don't tell Hayden about none of this. And then Tamara's like, look, you know, I don't have the FBI at my door. I know that you got all this other stuff going on. So he's like, okay, what you know about that? She was like, I don't know nothing. When she lied about that, see, she was truthful before, and now she lied because Hayden done told her every damn thing, bro. And I think Gary knows that as well. But anyhow, going on from there, he's getting ready to leave. And once he leaves, you know, Tamara picks the pen with the bright ass red light on it, looks at it and smiles and looks in the air. And I'm like, okay, what is about to go down? So anyhow, moving on from there, we head over to see Miss Danny and the counselor. So Danny, without hesitation, is like, look, my whole damn life is a wreck. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. The, <laughs> the counselor is like, hold on, wait a minute. What's a wreck? She was like, my whole damn life, my whole damn relationship. And then she goes on to tell her that, you know, Tony's kids saw her while she was trying to get up on that pony. And, you know, it just... You know, she didn't need that. She was in lingerie. She was trying to get her groove thing back. And and it, it just took her out of it. And the whole thing for her is, you know, what if they don't like her? You know, having kids is a big responsibility. And even the counselor conveys to her that, you know, sometimes, you know, with you not being in that in that mindset at that point in time and then being thrust into this situation where you are having to be quote unquote a stepmother, you know, that could be a whole lot of pressure for an individual who was not ready for that at the time. But then she also mentioned something that was quite profound in this segment right here in this episode where she stated to Danny because Danny was all over the place with her statements. But she was like, look, you seem to worry about things that could happen like they've already happened already. And I was like, mm, let that marinate. Like you seem to worry about things like they've already happened. And I was like, damn, like she does do that. And if we want to be truthful, sometimes we as individuals do that for real, for real. Like we worry about things that we really don't know how the outcome is going to outcome. You see what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? We don't know what the outcome is going to be. We really don't. So I'm going to just say that was pretty good right there. I, I enjoyed that piece right there. But anyhow, moving on from there. So now we're about to get into the mess because we head back over to the hospital and we see Karen is still in the waiting room waiting to be seen. And now we see um, Zach running into the waiting room because he's late. He has a bag in his hand, which just so happens to be a bag for Karen. He knew that she probably would be hungry because she stated that they would be there for quite some time. So anyhow, he sits down in the chair and, you know, they have a little bit of conversation. He's talking about, is there anything that I need to fill out on the document? She's like, no, all you have to do is sign your name right here on the line. And Zach is like, please don't even act like you know my information better than me. She was like, boy, I probably know it better than you do. And I ain't gonna lie, there's some truth to that. As a matter of fact, you know, sometimes I don't even fill out my documents because my wife, about the time I get in there, she already got my shit filled out. 
And I'm like, what? You couldn't wait on me? And she was like, no, no. I, I went ahead and filled it out for you. I was like, cool, cool. And then she says, well, can't nobody read your writing anyway. So I was like, cool. You don't like my chicken scratch, but you like my chicken scratch on that checkbook, though. But, <laughs> but anyhow, moving on from there. So Zach and, and, and Karen, they just, they just have this great chemistry with one another. Of course, they've been together for quite some time. And, you know, they still have that bond with one another. So she's laughing, he's laughing, and he's putting the papers down. And he's talking about the, the child having a big light bulb head like he has and all of this stuff. Woo, woo, woo. And then when he puts the paper down, I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And he does it. He puts the hand on the on the belly and I was like, oh hell no. And who do we see coming into the waiting room? We see Fatima herself who sees it in all the glory. I was like, oh Father God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Anyhow, moving on from there. So, so, <laughs> so Fatima comes in. Zach's trying to kiss her on her cheek. Fatima ain't going for it. Now, I thought that they had mentioned that Fatima was going to stay away, but see, Zach messed up when he told her she could come if she wanted to. See, he should have just stood on business and said, okay, look, just, just sit this one out. Fatima, I think, would have respected that. Even if she didn't want to do it, I think that she would have respected his wishes. Um, definitely in this situation. But, of course, she really wanted to be there to support her soon-to-be husband, whatever that is, right? So, you know, I, I, I feel some type of way about it because I would want my fiancé to be there with me. But this situation right here is messy. It's muddy. And I guess that's why we're in this situation to begin with. And now, all of a sudden, Zach wants to check the documentation. When he just stated to Karen that everything was good. It was great. Everything was right where it was supposed to be. But now, all of a sudden, he wants to check the documentation again to make everything <laughs> to make sure everything is correct and, and and while he's doing that in walks the nurse now when the nurse walks in she was like okay i'll just take that documentation from you and she was like okay we got karen and zach all right zarin that would be a great name for a baby they were like uh-uh uh-uh don't do that <laughs> don't do that oh my gosh man I'm crying right now. I wish y'all could see it, man. But anyhow, moving on from there, we head over to Jordan's house. Now, when we see Jordan, he's hanging out at his crib on the couch and in walks Andy. So when Andy walks in, she immediately jumps over there on the couch where he is and lays a big old kiss on him like... You know what I'm saying? Kissing them from neck to ear and all of this stuff. So anyhow, she was like, look, I just want to thank you for, you know, the good word, putting in the good word for Miss Marie Willis, right? And he was like, so I'm assuming she came by your office today. She was like, yes, yeah, she definitely did. And he was like, okay, so what's good? And she was like, well, you know, pretty much, you know, she told me that she believed you and that you were not a liar. And then I did some other research and, you know, it, it turned out that your story checked out. Like, that's deep. And even Jordan is sitting there like, okay, hold on, let's pause for a moment. So you're telling me that due to the fact that Mrs. Willis and the research and all of this good stuff, and I understand it. But I don't understand it. Y'all know how I get down on this platform. Jordan is like me. Like, I'm expecting, if I have yet to give you a reason to not trust me, then your ass should be trusting me from the get-go. Now, she's going to give you this sob story, Jordan, talking about, well, you know, I've been in relationships where, you know, this is the first time that I've actually been able to trust somebody. And, you know, you know, I, you know, this is something new for me. And I just didn't want to make something or create something in my mind, Jordan, and some delusional world where I can hear what I want to hear. And that's true. With all jokes aside, that's true, Andy. But at the same time, this man right here has yet to give you a reason not to trust him. And what you're doing right now is bringing that previous trauma that you've had over your, your, your dating life. You're bringing it into this new environment, into this new context. And what you're going to end up doing is going to be swallowed up. <laughs> you're going to be swallowed <laughs> up. I couldn't help myself. Like you're going to end up messing up this relationship. 
right? Because of your past situationships. And they weren't even worth it. And then you're going to end up in the same shit snit that you were in in the very beginning before you met this man. So anyhow, don't, don't mess up a good thing if you don't have to. All right? Let's just hold off on the assumptions. You know, my grandfather used to always say, when you assume, you make an ass out of yourself. See, don't assume shit. Damn, I'm trying to do better. Don't assume nothing. All right? Don't assume nothing. Just, just go off what you see. And even Jordan, as he was closing out this session right here, he stated that my actions are what I hope would give you that assurance. If I'm not doing anything out the way, like you shouldn't have any trust issues. And I was like, damn, drop a bomb. You see what I'm saying? Let's move on, man. I have a, man, Jordan, thumbs up, bro. You did it. Listen, you did it. You did the light skinned brothers proud. Move it on. <laughs> move it on. Oh. Uh, so, so Jordan leaves. He has to go to, you know, a series of meetings or whatnot. And Andy's like, well, I'll be here when you get back. And um, she goes through the Manila file folder. But in the meantime, we head back over to the hospital where we see Zach is nervous as hell because he has to get some blood drawn. And of course, Fatima is sitting there by his side, you know, and he's waiting and waiting and waiting, right? So, the good thing is in, in this scene right here is that they resolve their issue. Fatima apologizes to Zach for not telling him that she was going to show up, but she also tells him that she really didn't want to, you know, she really didn't want to come, but she decided to come because it's her life as well. Definitely if the child is actually his. So I get that as well. She's uncomfortable. And I know a lot of people are dogging her out for whatever reason, but at the end of the day, this does affect Fatima as well. But I get it. This is a situation between Zach and Karen, but if she's going to marry Zach, then it becomes her situation as well. Because if the child is his, then it becomes Fatima's as well. See, we gotta, we gotta understand that. We really do. I know it's a messy situation, but it's a messy situation that brother Zach created. All right. So next we head over to see Gary in his office and hating ass Hayden coming to see him to pretty much convey to him what went down at the law firm. So he tells him about Miss Marie Willis coming over to see Andy. And he was like, for real? He was like, yeah. So hold on, hold on. Did I miss something? Yeah, let me step back real quick. Hold on. Something just came into my spirit and told me to step back because when Hayden comes into the office, he notices, you know, a little something on Gary's neck. Looked a little red over there. So Gary's like, oh, man, you know, it, you know how it is when a woman get too excited and all of that, right? And Hayden's like, yeah, man, I know how it is, man. You know, Tamara goes wild on me and biting on me and stuff. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Are you going to figure it out right here? No, you too dumb for that. Yeah, you sitting over here dapping up the man that's dapping up your man. Listen. <laughs> man, oh man, moving on, man. Um, Hayden goes on to tell um, Gary that, you know, Andy got a big well that came in, like dropped right into her lap. He was like, well, who is it? He was like, look, it's Miss Marie Willis, you know, the, the, the billionaire, and she's moving around like the president with the Secret Service, whoop, whoop, whoop. And he was like, for real? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, look, I just so happened to know her. I did some business for her back in the day with some investing. So I think it's about time that we let her know who she's getting in bed with. And I'm like, damn, bro, these niggas are evil, man. Like, completely. I told y'all the H brothers, man, they literally bring hell everywhere they go. So anyhow, moving on from there, we head back over to Jordan's crib where we see Andy now calling for Tima to tell her that she's about to get into Gary's business, right? And she was like, what's going on? Andy pretty much conveys to her that Gary was the one to set up the whole situation on Jordan. She was like, for real? And then not only that, but she has more intel that could bury his ass. I was like, uh-oh, go ahead and do it. Do you need me to come over there and get the shovel? Because I would definitely do it, but it seemed like you already got your henchman in Fatima. Fatima coming over there with the sneakers and the switchblade. So you're going to be all right. You in good hands with Fatima. All right. So moving on from there, we head over to the new new salon where we see Brother Trey is coming in. And we see 
Pam standing behind the counter or whatnot. And then Pam is like, uh, I see you coming in, but you ain't got no boxes. Are you here to get some of the Roots to Riches or whatnot? Her brand that she's selling at the salon. And he was like, no, I'm actually looking for your homegirl. And uh, she was like, look, you ain't looking for her. And he's like, okay, so what am I looking for? She was like, you looking for the same thing that Lucky was looking for in Poetic Justice. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. I don't think old boy's old enough to know anything about Poetic Justice. <laughs> hold on get it together and then he's like okay so what am i here for and she was like you want to smell my poo nanny and i'm like hell to the nah man get the hell up out of there man and as soon as i say that he walking up out of the room man i'm like go ahead and do that man get up out of there save yourself <laughs> save yourself bro uh moving on from there while Pam is still standing behind the counter, the phone rings at the salon. She picks it up, and it just so happens to be Aaron. So Aaron is back. Aaron is looking for Karen. Of course, Karen is not there. And of course, he's called the right person because if he wants to know the 411, he's definitely going to get all the information from Sister Pam. So it's a done deal. So anyhow, moving on from there, we head over to Andy's crib where we see Gary is now coming in and he's like, look, I knew you just couldn't stay away from me. And while he's saying that, Ed walks for Tima from the other side of the room. And I was like, oh, hell no. And he says the same. <laughs> he says the same thing, right? He was like, oh, why are you here? So was like, look, just do what she tells you to do. Don't ask too many questions. Just hear her out. Now, this scene right here didn't do enough for me. I'm going to be honest with you all. I felt that Andy said, I guess, what she needed to say, but she didn't say enough because this guy still thinks he's in the clear. He still thinks he's in the clear. So she didn't give him anything to to say, okay, I need to take this a little more serious. Definitely, when you're dealing with a guy like Gary, you probably need to give him a little bit of bait to let him know, hey, I got you dangling right here. Like, your life is in the palm of my hand right now. Outside of Fatima or whatever she got in that dang old bag over there, tapping on it. We already know what that is. But I want to know, Andy, what you got that's going to keep me from opening my trap. I mean, realistically, this shit right here, Andy could have been handled over the telephone. Like, you could have told him about this because you didn't do anything. And then you had Fatima come all the way across the town to do nothing, right? So, yeah, this could have definitely been one of those phone calls to tell him to leave Jordan alone. And I would wreck your life and mine if, 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 if it comes down to protecting him. Like, yeah, we could have done that over the phone. Yeah, we definitely could have. But anyhow, going on from there, we head back over to the hospital room where we see Karen laid up on the bed with the stomach, the belly exposed with the little jelly that they wipe up on there and all of that stuff. I was like, oh, it's real now. We's about to get in the shit snit, right? So anyhow, uh, when that doctor pulled out that daggone needle, I almost passed down. <laughs> I was passed out my damn self. I was like, hell to the now. And then the writers of this scene right here lose me. All right. And let me tell you why. Because when the doctor is looking at the monitor, you immediately notice two babies. You see them. Now, I can't tell if they're identical or fraternal, but you definitely see two babies in the womb. All right. So she's talking to Karen and she's laughing it out. And all of a sudden she looks at the monitor and then she wants to turn it around. And she's like, OK. And of course, Karen, hearing the doctor say that in the way that she said it, she was like, OK, is everything OK? And she was like, yeah, everything is good. But when was your last checkup? Like, when was your last ultrasound? She was like, well, it was at seven weeks. And then she was like, okay, well, this is a concern. So she turns the monitor back around and shows her that she got the heartbeat from right here, which was one of the babies. The other heartbeat should be coming from this side where the other baby is, right? And she was like, okay, so what's going on, Doc? Now you're looking at this, Karen. You're looking at it. You see two of the same thing. It's identical. So that means you got two babies in your stomach, Karen. It's not that hard to read. And I'm like, what the hell? Who is writing this? Um, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. But that that got me right there because I'm like, you're looking at it on the screen all day like it is what it is. And when we find out that she's having fraternal twins, so technically, I hate to say it, Aaron could be the father of one of the babies and Zach could be the father of the other because of the situation. And I'm sitting here like, Dad, go on it. Like, please, Tyler, don't do this. And Tyler's like, I got to do it. I got to do it, bro. So please don't let it be one and the other. Like, oh, my gosh, man, this is going to be crazy. I don't even know where to go with this storyline at this point. Oh, man. All right, that's pretty... <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it y'all i hope that you guys have enjoyed this one i went about five to six minutes over my typical time um but i hope that you guys have enjoyed it make sure to like and subscribe to this channel make sure to hit that thumbs up down below also make sure to hit the notification button down below so you don't miss a thing that's going on over here with recap with mo we got a whole bunch of stuff coming your way we're gonna get into the shit's right here talk to y'all soon peace